Um, my name is Trisha Intentoli and I work out in Gold Canyon. I'm a dental hygienist. Um, let's go. I've actually been in dentistry for about 21 years. I started out as a, um, an assistant and um, again, I worked in Gold Canyon for 18 years. Um, and then I decided um, I wanted to go and um, do dental hygiene. I wanted to um, kind of be a, my own provider, which is a provider I, I get my own patients pretty much. Um, I went to Rio Salado Community College. Um, I got a, uh, these are my bragging rights right here. I got a, a Colgate Star Award. It's kind of a student total um, award for just overall being amazing. There you go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I graduated with some honors. Here's me and the dean because I got the, uh, the Star Award. I, I got some pictures with her, um, me as a student um, in school. Um, I'm a native of Arizona. I was raised up in Mason. The movie on. Um, really? I enjoy painting ceramics, and of course, these are my loves uh, my two dogs. Um, I'm a big animal lover, right? Pitbulls? Yes. Uh, they just kind of come into my life. I don't know. I don't that know how male? that works out. Um, the big one and male? No, both girls. Yeah. yeah. Both girls? Yeah, we got, a lot of, we got a lot of estrogen at the house. <laughs> um, so, with oral health, a lot of people think, and, and, and I don't know why insurance does this too, they make your medical, they make your dental. But really, this is our gateway to our body. So what we put into it, um, into our mouths and how we take care of our mouth, it affects all kinds of areas of, of our um, body. Um, it contributes to heart disease, bone loss, gum disease, um, it strokes, lung conditions, tooth decay, mouth cancer. Pregnancy does a lot too when women, when women are um, uh, pregnant. Hormonal changes affects gums, things like that. Um, the things that I'm going to talk about today are going to be heart disease, diabetes, pneumonia, diabetes, per, uh, periodontal disease, which is your, your gum disease, uh, dry mouth, which is that is very prevalent, mostly um, for seniors, root decay, denture-induced stomatitis, and just some overall tips on how to take care of, of our mouth. Um, heart disease. Um, it's a, maintaining good health is, is a very powerful tool for this. Um, it against heart attacks, strokes, infection. Um, people with uh, heart disease, they have um, gum disease associated with um, in developing even more risk of heart disease. Poor dental health increases the risk of bacterial infection in the bloodstream, which can affect our heart valves. Um, patients that have artificial heart valves and artificial knees, we always have them pre-medicate with a, an antibiotic an hour before their appointment because we have so much bacteria in our mouth, it goes through the bloodstream and it can go to these vital areas. Um, again, there's 700 different bacteria in, in, in the mouth and um, it's hard for us to fight that off sometimes. Uh, di diabetics, um, the diabetes, uh, diabetics have a higher risk of periodontal disease. Periodontitis hinders the body's ability to use in, um, insulin, which periodontitis is gum disease. High blood sugar and, and uh, the effect of diabetes can lead to gum infection. Diabetics have a, a weaker immune system, so they can't fight off those, um, those bacteria in their mouth. Um, it also, diabetics have, uh, just like when they have a wound, it's impaired healing. The same is with their gums. I can tell sometimes when a patient has diabetes because they bleed a lot when, when their blood sugar is not stable. We can do all the right stuff. They can come in every six months or every four months. They can floss, they can brush, but if their sugar is all over the place, it just comes out into their gums. So that's why we ask those questions. Have you had any um, changes in your medical, um, any, hop, any surgeries? Any, that's why we ask all that stuff um, at your appointment because we wanna know why, isn't, why aren't things responding? Why aren't teeth responding? Why aren't you responding to what we're doing? Um, they also um, have a fungal infection with candidiasis, uh, parotid salivary gland enlargement. The parotid gland is one of our major salivary glands. That's what lubricates our mouth. We'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but that's something that's very important and diabetics uh, really suffer from a lot of um, dehydration, things like that. Um, again, diabetics are, are two times more likely to get um, the gum disease because of all the things that we just talked about, weakened immune system, um, fighting off um, natural bacteria. Uh, pneumonia, this is something that we did uh, uh, in school. We actually went to a hospital 
and took care of patients because they saw a link through um, oral hygiene in the mouth and when they're sitting there and getting pneumonia and, and um, they were actually, if you can clean their mouth, it saved the hospital thousands of dollars for having to treat these patients while they were um, incubated and, and, and things. Uh, poor oral hygiene is linked to pneumonia um, because you're breathing the bacterial droplets um, from the mouth to the lungs and increases your, your chances of developing pneumonia, mostly if you're resting, if you're not active and you're, you're laying in bed and you're, um, you're, you're ill, you're sick. Nursing homes and caregiving situations where patients aren't able to care for their teeth, very high. Because a lot of times they're thinking, in medical, they're thinking of everything but the mouth. Um, they're thinking of taking care of you, their, your medicine, your food, and all of that stuff. But the, the hygiene sometimes gets neglected. Um, good oral hygiene is a great way to combat that um, bacteria. Also, another um, interesting thing was years ago in, de in, um, in caregiving situations, nursing homes, they now put a name on somebody's dentures because years ago they would get them mixed up with other people's, which sounds very nasty. Um, but now it's, it's by law when you have a, a denture or a partial made, they actually will say your name on it. So that's, that's very cool. Um, periodontal disease, uh, which is your gum disease. Um, it's, it is a serious infection that damages the tissues. This is where your, your tissues should be. This is tissue actually. Um, and it uh, destroys that, it destroys your bone. Um, and this is eating away your bone, which that's what supports our teeth, bone and tissue. So if we are decreasing and losing that, our teeth become mobile. That's why we wanna keep those areas clean because that's what bacteria does. It eats away the bone and the tissue. And that infection does. Um, this is early stages of gum disease. This is just your, um, the inflammation and the red kind of around where the, where the arrows are. And this is, this is healthy gum. I want it pink. I want it firm. I don't want it flapping. I don't want it to be red. I don't want it to blanch when you touch it. I don't want it to, to turn white, kind of like when you're white knuckling things. Um, here's the different stages. Uh, you've got your healthy gum. You've got your gingivitis. That's, that's that first stages where it's just... <laughs> red and puffy, maybe not even brushing our gum, gums when we're brushing our teeth, but just focusing on our, our teeth. Um, and then the inflammation around the gum starts to separate. And I don't know if you've ever heard of your hygienist talking about a pocket around your teeth, because that's what it's doing. That bacteria is eating and, we're, and now your gum is going away from the tooth. All of this bacteria is going in. But when you lose gum, you naturally lose bone. So if you're losing gum, you have recession, you have things like that, you're also losing bone because you don't usually see bare bone after gums shrink down. Severe bone loss and extreme deep pocket is going to, bone should be up here, and now we're only hanging down by our roots. That's not very much, and so now that tooth is probably mobile, um, and the whole gum area is probably very unhealthy. Um, this is where all of the bacteria sits, and these are the pockets right here. This is what we measure when we're measuring your gums um, and trying to find out um, how much bone loss do we have? How much tissue destruction do we have? And how, how do we treat that? Um, what causes the periodontal disease? What are the major things? Poor hygiene. Um, bacterial growth in the mouth by not cleaning that. Um, or being a diabetic and not being able to fight off those natural, um, that, not being able to fight, your, nat your body's not able to fight that bacteria. Um, illness, cancer patients and diabetics. Um, cancer patients, immune system, extremely, extremely low. I have a, a gentleman that um, I've got him on coming in every four months because he is um, being treated with cancer and I'm seeing rapid loss in his bone. Um, and he takes care of his mouth. He does everything that he needs to do, but we're still seeing that. So what do we do? We get that bacteria before it starts to do damage. Um, bad habits, smoking, um, that actually, um, constricts the blood vessels, and it causes a lot of bone loss as well. Um, medications, uh, anticonvulsant, um, and seizure. Seizure medicines tend to make the gums overgrowth, and then a bacteria likes to sit underneath there. And you'll see it's very prominent, very bumpy, and it looks very painful too, um, to have that just constantly inflamed. Um, failing to go to the dentist for regular checkup and cleaning is a great way to get periodontal disease. The nice thing about periodontal disease is that you can always, I, I like to tell my patients, no crying over spilled milk, 
we can stabilize things now. So if we start to get good, we can usually keep things where they should be. Um, and and that's, that's a big goal for us, is keeping things stable. Dry mouth, this, <laughs> this is for a lot of my patients. And, um, and when people have dry mouth, they tend to think, oh, I'm just gonna drink more water. And that's not what's doing it. So um, water is really making you go to the bathroom more. <laughs> that's all that's doing because your body just soaks it up so quick. Um, certain medications, nerve pain medications, high blood pressure medicine, um, muscle relaxers, antihistamines. Hey, I, all, most of my patients talking about allergies. A lot of people are on antihistamines, um, mostly out here um, when things are blooming. Uh, neurological, um, people um, that suffer with uh, mental disease and things like that also uh, tend to get dry mouth from, from their particular uh, medications. Cancer uh, treatments um, that use radiation near the neck or the head kill the salivary glands. Um, so they're at high, high risk for it. Uh, dehydration, hey, we're in the desert. This is, this is a big thing for us. The weather, hot. Uh, diabetes, it incre the increased blood sugar in the body causes them to dehydrate. And, and you'll, diabetics, they're always got water <coughs> carrying around because they're always thirsty. Um, the big thing about dry mouth is it causes tooth decay. When you don't have sa um, saliva to fight off um, the acids in your mouth, high, high risk. So people that are, are not treating their dry mouth, you're probably gonna be having tooth pain. You're probably be going to the dentist. Um, the autoimmune disease, such as um, Sjogren's and Crohn's disease, they are really high on, on, on dry mouth as well. And menopause, during menopause, we dry out. Um, so does our mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, saliva keeps the mouth wet. Um, it also contains enzyme uh, amylase to break down starches. That means that your mouth is, pro is digesting your food already. Uh, but we also, um, it also moistens our food to be swallowed. So when people have dry mouth, they suffer a lot with having to be able to swallow. Um, it protects our teeth from decay, fighting off that acid that we're constantly bathing on our teeth. Coffee, wine, um, acidic foods, um, oranges, uh, lemons. Saliva also prevents infection by controlling viruses and fungi in the mouth. Your, your saliva does a lot for you, so uh, not to be underestimated. There's our yummy, there's our fun music. Um, these are products that are great for dry mouth. Uh, most of my patients tell me, this is a biotin rinse. That's great if you're doing it in the morning and then you're doing it at night. Not always convenient. What you have to use for, for products like this it's an all-day thing. So most of my patients say, I did a rinse and it didn't do anything for me. No, dry mouth is something that you battle all day long. This is something that is constant. Um, these products, um, they have a, um, an en a protein enzyme that replicates what your saliva does. So water isn't doing anything for you but making you go to the bathroom because these products actually have what saliva replicates. So I love the biotin spray because some people, very few people don't like biotin, but I really like it because it has a spray. Put it in your purse, keep it in your pocket, by your bed, get a couple of them. It's something that you can just reach and grab, give yourself a squirt, along with your water. I'm not saying don't drink any water because we need our water, but let's get some more of that protein, um, the enzyme in there, and you will see a lot more lubricant, You'll, you will feel better, but it's something that you do all day long. They also have these lozenges. lozenges. Um, I like those here and there, but I'd rather not see somebody suck on something at the side of their mouth all day long because what that does is the tissue becomes irritated. So I, I really like the, um, the the moisturizing spray. But yeah, it's great to have some lozenges in the in your purse, in your pocket. You know, kind of spice things up. Um, root decay. Um, I was talking about when we start to lose bone and we start to lose gum, what's now being shown is a lot of the root surface, not the enamel protective part of our, our tooth. And so with root decay, we have recession of the gums and the bone exposures, which is the root surfaces. Um, root exposure to acids from food and drinks, you're no longer getting protected from the enamel. And so the roots of our teeth are very soft and porous and acid goes through them very quickly. Um, food, things that are sitting on there causes um, root, de uh, root decay. I'm going to show you a picture of 
So this is after somebody has um, some periodontal disease, this person has some bone loss. You can see where their tissue and their bone used to be. And this is now all that bone is gone and the tissue is gone. So naturally, here's the bone and the tissue. But this is the surface right here that's constantly being attacked from acid. And that's the really soft area of the tooth. The top of the tooth, we have more of a protective jacket over it. So you just think about me just taking off my jacket and now this is my root surface. That's what that is down here. Very susceptible to getting decay, which is also, you don't want decay there because if you start undermining here and having to get decay through there, you may possibly lose that tooth. Yeah. Um, here's some Ew. decay. Um, I tried to do an arrow. I don't know if you can really see it, but um, right along the gum line, right here, this is just where it's all gone. And that's all because of the root surface um, being attacked by the acid. So that's root decay on there. Very hard to, to manage. But um, for my patients that do have a lot of um, bone loss recession and, and possibly aren't um, doing the daily habits that they should, um, I, I suggest fluoride rinses. Always using toothpaste with fluoride. Um, I, I know some people like the natural stuff. Um, and that's great if they're not prone to um, cavities, but with root surfaces like this, I would always suggest the fluoride in there. Um, decreasing your dry mouth, using your biotin, keeping your mouth wet, um, good oral hygiene, regular brushing and checkups. Um, Act is something over the counter that you can use. It's about three bucks. Um, at our office, we use um, uh, prescription strength. Um, this is um, many times over um, much stronger strength. And I think it cost us, I think it's $11 a bottle. Um, so I do prefer the, um, obviously, the, the prescription stuff. But hey, you want to try something at home, do something um, on, a, on a, a cheaper level, definitely act over the counter. One of the things uh, to do is at nighttime, the last thing you do before you go to bed, rinse with that for about a minute. Do not drink water for 30, for 30 minutes afterwards. Oh, I'm sorry, so 60 seconds rinse, 30 minutes do not drink water afterwards. That's why I like somebody to do it the, before they go to bed. Because then if you wake up in an hour and you need to drink your water and all that good stuff, you're, you're good. You've got that protection. Um, next thing um, for um, irritation in the mouth is denture-induced stomatitis. That's, um, it's an inflammation and redness of the oral mucosa um, membrane <coughs> underneath the denture or partial. Uh, so you can see all the red. You can actually see where a partial, this is the roof of the mouth. This is where a partial has been sitting and irritating. This is how normal tissue should look. This is all the red. It's just inflamed, it's irritated. Um, it's caused by a yeast or a fung fungus called candida, um, wearing a denture all the time, not letting that tissue breathe. Um, also not keeping the mouth clean, not cleaning a denture properly, um, or cleaning your mouth. You still have to, to, to take care of your mouth even when you do have a denture in there. Um, diabetes fighting off infection, fighting off that fungal infection, things of that sort. People that take steroids or inhalers, um, and that, you know, uh, your rescue inhaler, things like that by not, by not rinsing afterwards. So that's a big thing, I have an inhaler. And um, remembering that afterwards, I need to rinse my mouth um, because it really can cause a fungal infection, it, mostly in the back of your throat as well. Um, Rinsing the mouth after, um, after meals, um, that's a big thing. Some people use a lot of um, adhesive in their denture, so that's kind of difficult when you're struggling to keep your denture in. Um, but if it's, you're able to, to rinse your partial and rinse your denture, that's, that's a great idea to do that. Um, keep your dentures as clean as possible, um, removing and soaking them at night. Um, if uh, hygiene's not helped, then you can see the dentist and we can provide a medication for you. Um, we do that kind of last aspect. Uh, we like, you know, maybe just cleaning things up might be able to help that, but sometimes we do have to give a fungal infection to take care of that. Um, cleaning a denture and a partial. Um, the first step is when you're removing it, um, brush and rinse off the food debris. Um, anything that's on there first. Um, I prefer, uh, we, we like to see you soak um, your dentures in a, a cleaning solution, maybe some I actually have a couple little samples in there, some polydent um, denture cleaner. That helps to kind of, it's almost like an Alka-Seltzer, kind of like breaks up the food and, and makes it a little bit looser. Um, you can put it in a, a little denture bath. You can get it in a little Tupperware. It doesn't really matter what you want. prefer to soak your denture in, as long as it's in water um, and with some cleaners, that just gives you a little extra clean. Um, in the morning, take it out, rinse it off, 
brush it again because now all that food that's been loosened up, you want to get that off of there too. Um, I have some patients who just refuse to take them out. Maybe, um, maybe being vain, not wanting your spouse to see what you look like um, without it. But I tell them, find a time during the day to let your mouth breathe. If your spouse is doing gardening, then take it out. Let your mouth breathe. Another thing that wearing a denture constantly does is it makes the tissue very flappy and you need a good solid structure for a denture to sit in your mouth firmly. It, 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 the, the roof of the mouth is what keeps your denture on there. So if you're constantly wearing one, you're wearing away that you're making your gum flappy and you're also the bone is shrinking. So eventually you're gonna have a really hard time wearing your denture. So there are bad aspects, not only fungal infections, you can lose bone and your dentures are now loose and non-fitting, which now you're gonna get sore spots and, and frustration. Um, here's, here's some of uh, the little cleaners that, um, and you can use generic ones too. And even if you didn't wanna use that every day, maybe every other day, a couple times a week, uh, this is a denture brush. I really like these because they're stronger than a toothbrush. I never want you to use a, a medium bristle toothbrush. I want you to use a soft bristle toothbrush on your teeth. This is nice. You can really get scrubbing. You can, you can really get all that, um, that food. And, and you also get calculus. Um, you get plaque on your, on your uh, denture that gets hard um, because that's what saliva does. Saliva makes that. So not really necessarily having teeth. Um, oral health. This is daily habits that um, we love to see you do. Brushing your teeth two times a day for two minutes a day. I don't mind when somebody is using a manual toothbrush if they're doing great. I love that. Most people don't do a very good job when they're brushing. So for those people, I'd love to have the electric toothbrush. 7,500 to 30,000 repetitions per minute. You can't do that in a month on your own. Um, I want you to brush your, to your tongue, take a good couple swipes, even the insides of your cheeks. And even if you have dentures, cleaning the inside of your cheeks, keeping that mouth clean and healthy. Um, using toothpaste with fluoride and then getting the plaque and the, and the and the food out from in between your teeth. Um, some people don't want to do floss. Some people have a hard time with floss. <laughs> I love floss. <laughs> I, yeah, some people and, and, I, and some people like that the little picks because it feels easier. Some people have bigger spaces and that's where the picks are good. The thing that I really like about the floss, so if you do like the picks because it's easier, I still want you to floss here and there because nothing's getting in between the teeth that are touching like that. You're getting the gum, but you're not getting spikes in, and this is where you get the cavities. This is because you need to get, plaque is sticky. If I was to take it, throw it, it would stick on that wall. It needs to mechanically be removed. And that's what flossing is doing. Flossing is not cramming it into your gum. It's taking it on that tooth, sliding it around there and getting that off. So in conjunction with an interdental picks, and it, I also want floss here and there. So I like that. Um, the one thing I did want to show about brushing and you can do, and this is the same with an electric toothbrush to a degree. Lots of times when we're brushing, some people just do this. I don't want, I don't want this. I want circles. And I want a 45 degree angle up towards the gum. Because I want the gums to be brushed as well. Not aggressively. It doesn't take much to brush your teeth. You do not have to go to town on it. It does not have to be, I don't want it to ever be a moderate toothbrush or a medium bristle. 45 degree angle up, circles. When you're on the bottom, you're gonna go 45 degree down. I always want you to feel like you are brushing your gums as long as, as well as your teeth because after what we learned, what's holding our teeth in? Our tissue and our bone. And that's what we wanna clean. If you're doing this, you're not getting that bacteria that's, that's hiding in those deeper pockets well, and deeper pockets require a cleaning, but to some degree, you're still getting two millimeters underneath your gum. When you're opening, I always tell my patients, see how horizontal that, that toothbrush is? I want you to lift it higher. So when I'm brushing my lower teeth, my hand's like this. Because what I'm doing, if I'm higher, I'm getting down at that gum line. I'm also, I lift it higher, I can get down in that gum line on my back teeth. So. If I'm, if I'm on my lower teeth, I'm lifting up, upper teeth going down so I can get that area in there. Electric toothbrush, 45 degree angle, and it does all the work for us. 
I have some patients go, I'm too lazy to use my electric. I said, no, you're actually working harder with your manual. <laughs> the electric's doing everything for you. Just take it and carry it around. An electric toothbrush usually has a timer on it. Remember I told you two minutes? It will make it into quadrants. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and 30 seconds. So when you're, when you're brushing and it'll give a little like shake, we'll do another area. And that's, and that's the thing I love about that, the electric timer too, because when I'm using my manual toothbrush real quick, you think I'm doing two minutes? No, <laughs> I'm just doing it real quick. So I like, I like that aspect of it too. But I see a lot of patients who do a great job with their manual toothbrush. And if they do, perfect. I tend to slack a little on my manual toothbrush. So um, here's some of the little products to get in between the teeth. Um, these are called interdental brushes. These are reusable ones. They have different sizes. Um, this is a, um, a tight, a moderate, and a large. So some people that have a, uh, a certain amount of bone loss will now have big gaps in between their teeth, little triangles. And these are great for cleaning that because floss is just kind of loosey-goosey at that time. I don't want somebody wasting their time um, flossing if they have big spaces in their teeth because they're not really getting all of those areas. So you get that brush, goes right in and it touches both sides and it's getting that plaque off because remember, plaque's very sticky. These are nice, these are, throw them in your purse. Um, these are disposable ones that, and I, um, I threw a sample in for everybody too, to try that. If you have the spaces, if you don't have big spaces, never force an interdental brush in your teeth. You go to push it and it stops, it's not, that's not the right size for you or you don't have enough um, tissue bone loss for that. So these are good candidates for everybody. These are spaces that food trap every time you eat chicken and you're constantly cleaning out that area, that's where these come in handy. I like these um, for the person that just doesn't want to use floss. Maybe your dexterity is bad. Maybe um, you have arthritis. Um, these are these are really, really good. I like this. They also make the, these. I have a gentleman who's like, I can't use those. My hands are too big. They have one that looks like a toothbrush and you can snap on the floss. Um, it's already easy to go, ready to go. And then he can use a, a, an easier handle to, to get that area. So you can think out of the, outside the box. It's not always wrapping it around flossing, you know, it's, that's always, nobody likes to floss, right? Um, for dexterity, for those that do have a hard time, um, maybe with their arthritis or maybe a stroke, things like that, um, these are great options. This is a pool, um, have, if you've ever seen the little, um, the little floaties at the, in the, for a pool, that's what this is. You cut it, put your toothbrush in it, you can wrap something around it, giving you a bigger handle so you can kind of, and you can do this to electric toothbrushes as well um, I've got another one that I like that is probably easy um, tennis ball you know so whatever's easier for you to construct I mean if, if if trying to get a hole in a tennis ball is you know not doable wrap some fabric do things like that you could there's other little options to do so that's really nice for somebody as well <laughs> I just thought that was funny <laughs> Um, Where do you get my like, picture from? Oh, the internet. You know, I was like, I was looking for, you know, well, I have to entertain with some pictures here. Right? I had <laughs> cheeks like that one. <laughs> um, routine dental visits. Um, we generally want to see you um, two times a year, every six months. This is for the, this is for the, um, the general um, non, uh, this is for the healthy mouth, generally. Um, Always coming in uh, for dental, usually with your, your um, regular cleanings, you'll see the dentist two times a year. One time we'll take x-rays, another time we'll just kind of do a visual just to see how things look. We also do oral cancer screening. So um, I, I know in my chair, I'm checking, when I have my patient, I'm checking for lymph nodes, I'm checking for heart. We have so many lymph nodes around our neck that drains the infection. It also um, is a great place for cancer to go. So I'm always doing a, an extra oral, um, exam on my patients, as well as an intraoral. I'm looking for white spots in your mouth, on your tongue, on your tissues, looking for any precancerous um, um, sites. So I've, we're doing it overall as well. Um, and not just people that chew tobacco or smoke cigarettes get oral cancer. Um, there's a lot of people that have never touched anything and they get oral cancer. Um, the patients who need more frequent visits. These are the patients that um, maybe for some amount of time we're able to get any, any dental care and now we're seeing um, that they have to um, get a deeper cleaning or what we call a scale and root planing. That's when you have calculus down by your, underneath the gum and it's very painful to get to. So what we do is we usually do a local um, 
uh, we, we get you numb and get that get that down in that gum that you just can't physically get to. Um, but after one of those, we'll usually see you every three to four months because that's how bacteria, so bacteria, I like to think of it as a party. At about three months, bacteria is having fun, having a few drinks, right? You hear a knock at the door at about four months. That's when the troublemakers come in. And the troublemakers are the ones that are out of control at the party. They're breaking stuff, they're causing trouble. And, that, and for a normal healthy person that doesn't have diabetes, doesn't have any compromised immune system, they can fight that off for two more months. That's our six month cleaning. But people that can't fight that off or have areas that they just can't get to, when you have deep pockets like that, you can't physically get to that. That's my job. So what I'm doing is I'm disrupting that bacteria at three to four months so it doesn't have time to eat away at the bone. So those people will usually come in either four times a year or three times a year. We'll see how they respond. Eventually, you will be able to go on a six-month plan, um, but let's start to take care and see how things, how, how things work. Um, patients that have heavy bleeding, deep pockets around their teeth. Um, my diabetics, I want to clean their mouth a little bit more sometimes because their blood sugar is just out of control, and that bleeding is telling us that there's something wrong. If your finger constantly bled every time that you touched it, you'd probably go to the doctor. But nobody thinks about that with their gums. But your gums are telling you a lot of things. Compromised immune systems, lack of good oral hygiene. Of course, I'm gonna just wanna see you a little bit more. Um, here's just some, uh, this is what plaque looks like. Sometimes, not that it's a big deal, but people think of plaque and calculus the same. Over here on the left, this is all hard stuff. This is stuff that, that lots of times when I touch or break off, people will think, I think you just broke my tooth. I'm like, no, yeah, we want that off. That eats away, all this gum is all puffy and pokey and it's actually starting to die. Um, it becomes ne necrotic. That over there's pink, that's pretty average for somebody at the top. Moderate, um, that's gonna, that's somebody that's probably not taking care of their teeth as much and this is somebody that hasn't been in for years. All of this yellow, that's not even their tooth anymore, that's calculus. And that's this plaque that got hard on it. Um, this is the soft plaque that we brush off. There are patients that we have a saliva gland underneath our tongue and that's what helps to create this, this hard calculus. So some people, even though they're doing a great job, they have, a, they, they have more enzymes in their teeth that are, are building that calculus. So that, that, that goes to play too. Um, so I got it. Um, <laughs> be smart, be smart about your mouth because when you're, um, when you're taking care of your mouth, you're taking care of your body. There's a, there's a lot of link to it. There's even Alzheimer's, dementia. There's research that shows that that's linked to periodontal disease. So if we're keeping our mouth as clean as possible, doing what we need to do, um, uh, going to the dentist regularly, we're, we're taking care of our body as well.